Well, here's a uh, demo on a typical coyote set. Um, first thing I look for is a natural um, area to set the trap so I can put it back to original looking when I'm completed with my set. So I'm going to use this uh, dirt patch here because that's easiest to put back to original looking after putting a trap in the ground. So I'll use a hammer and take an area, a small area up. I don't like to take a big area up. I'd rather have to force the trap into the location. It helps me get a stronger back or a, a solid, more solid trap. So I roughly cut out a little bowl, save all the top dirt. If I had to cut a piece of sod out, I'd set it aside and use that up top too. Another thing I like to do is keep keep the center of the bed real deep. I only want the jaws of the trap and a little bit of the base plate to be touching. The less points of contact, the, the more stable I can make the trap, I've found. But then I'll set my trap. Level up the pan. And normally I drive this completely down to the bottom, as deep as I can get it. I'd rather fight or break a chain than have a trap pull out of the ground. Um, for demonstration purposes, I'm only going to go down a little ways so we can have an easier time retrieving the trap. Um, make sure that that's deep enough. Now my trap doesn't even fit in the hole yet, which doesn't hurt my feelings. But I... Uh, I pick a position to where the trap, it's, it's easiest to put back to normal. I want to leave this clump of grass because it's, it's good cover. It's, it'll help hide, uh, hide the set, blend it when I'm done. So I'll get an idea where it needs to be and then take out for the dogs. Sometimes I'll just smash those down with a hammer too. I don't have to dig it all out. In fact, it's probably deep enough. And then for... With this style trap, for some reason, I always put the, uh, the stiff jaw towards the dirt hole or towards the, the scent area. I don't, it just, it just seems to set down better for me. But I take and I push, push that jaw back up in there and then down at the same time. That helps stiffen things up. And then bring that jaw over. Now that trap should be fairly stable already. Um, I have used pan covers before. Normally what I do is uh, carry a bag of peat moss, dried up peat moss, because it stays kind of spongy. And I'll put some of that in. Or use a, a leaf. A lot of times I'll grab a, a leaf and use that just as a pan cover to uh, keep the dirt from going in the underneath the pan and we start sifting I try to sift just over the main part of the trap and then start blending it in I just take the back of my hand now my pan's still right here so I make that the lowest section. Bring that grass back out. And I don't mind having some, some debris and stuff on the outside edge, just helps blend in the set. Maybe a stepping stick. I try not to put it over the levers. The levers are out here. So I'll come in at an angle a little bit and come in up there with one just to just to help guide his foot in the right location. But the center of the trap is the lowest point. The pan should stay low. And then blend it in. And then from there, I decipher my dirt hole or my lure location. 
And I just use my finger as a guide. It's probably seven inches or so. So the center of my pan's there, come back to there. Works out perfect to use that as a backer. Now if I'm just running a, a lure, like a gland lure or something, all I'll do is drive this in the ground, give it a little wiggle, and then I got a hole. I can drop a stick of lure down there and uh, um, nine times out of ten I'll use more than one at a location. I'll use a gland and a curiosity or a gland and a bait or uh, sometimes all three, gland, bait and uh, curiosity lure. So, but there's a, a set and if you look that animal steps out here it's, it's, so, it's pretty solid. That's um, from keeping the trap bed tight in the beginning it helps keep the outside area solid so if an animal's working it he doesn't step on a soft part and get nervous but uh, in the center it stays soft and that should be what uh, catches a coyote.